All right, we are back, and we have uh, a very special guest on here. We always have very special guests, but, again, we've got one of the great ones here on ATG Radio, and it's with great honor and privilege to welcome uh, one of the top heavyweights in the world, is a former kickboxing world champion, is a former holder of the English, British, Commonwealth, and European heavyweight championship, and the former world heavyweight title challenger as well. So many accolades. I don't want to go on to it because I don't want to take too much of this time. But without further ado, my main man, Matt Skelton, welcome to ATG Radio, champ. How are you doing tonight? Not too bad. Thank you for having me on. Hey, it's a great pleasure. I, I want to talk to you about this. Look, in the British scene as far as the heavyweight division, uh, you're amongst, you know, the, the best out there. It's a great division. There's so many great fights coming up. Uh, even over here in the United States, we got some, you know, young, talented fighters on the rise. I want to get into you. I want to ask you right now, your your thoughts right now on this heavyweight division. I think the the, the British, especially the British heavyweight division, is very open at the moment. There's um there are a lot of fighters out there, but as um it's it's gone to you know prove that you know none of them have kind of like just lasted the test of time. Is they've um. They've all come unstuck somewhere in their career, whether it be earlier on or later on in their career. But, um, yeah, I think the British heavyweight scene is very open. Um, regarding in Europe, as we know, the Klitschko brothers have it pretty much sewn up. Well, the Klitschko, yeah, we all know about the Klitschkos. They've been running things. I know a lot of people are waiting for them to get out of the way so some of this new crop uh, can take over. Uh, you know, going back into it, you know, um, my co-host Rufus Stephanow, Beans were on that. He wanted to ask you, you know, about a couple of upcoming fights uh, in the British scene right now. Rufus, you're on with Matt Skelton. Hello, champ. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm not too bad, thanks, Rufus. Good, thank you. Well, of course, uh, the biggest fight out there in heavyweight boxing period right now is Tyson Fury versus David Hay. I have to uh, have to get your thoughts and opinions on this. What what is, uh, yeah? What's your prediction? Well, my honest opinion. Uh, I mean, it's it's a hard one to call, really, because if you look at Tyson Fury, um, people say he's got a bit of a chin. He's been on the canvas, but he's always come back and proven good. He's always come back to win the fight. And um, the thing about um, David Hay, I think what I've noticed, he can punch. He's a very good puncher. Um, but also, when he has, uh, I think what's happened when he's fought, when Tyson's fought in the past, any fighter was got him on the go on the back foot, or put, haven't capitalized on it. They've kind of like let him back in the fight. Whereas I think if that David Hay, with David Hay, I don't think he'll get the opportunity. I think David Hay is when he sees the opportunity, when he sees, uh, you know, someone's hurt. He's, he's a very good finisher. He's very much like. Um, that's, that was my thoughts when Lennox Lewis was about. When Lennox Lewis had you on the go and he finished and he saw the opportunity to finish a fight, he would t- he would take it and capitalize on it. I think, so in regards to Fury and Hay, I think it depends how fight how long the fight goes on to, where, to whoever is going to get the decision. I think if it goes to points, I think I have to kind of favor um, Fury. But inside of sort of seven rounds, I've got to look at Hay. No, I absolutely agree. Uh, I've never seen uh, opinions so divided on a fight probably since Cooney and Holmes, but uh, and I'd imagine this is the British equivalent of that. I've always figured if the fight goes four or five rounds, it's Hayes' fight. If the fight goes longer yeah. than that, it's Fury's. So I absolutely agree. Um, I've got to ask you your other opinions on some other British fighters like Ian Lewison. I believe he's having a rematch with Colin Kenna. What are your thoughts? No, he's on fighting that? Tom yeah. Dallas. He's fighting Tom Dallas for the uh, Southern Area Heavyweight Title next. Oh, my, my Matt, mistake. Matt, Matt's familiar with Matt knocked him, knocked out Tom Dallas uh, about a year ago. Um, but yeah, that that fight right there, Ian Lewis. What do you think about Ian Lewis and Tom Dallas? Well, I think years ago when I first started my career, as as, as, as is common knowledge, I started in the boxing professional boxing circuit very late in life, and um. I used to spar with spar with Ian Lewis, and he he's a very good he's a very good um, puncher. And but I think what he always needed to buckle down on was his fitness. And I believe if he if he does that and puts in the work beforehand, I believe he's he's quite a formidable op- opponent. I mean, we've done a lot around sparring in the early days. Um, of late, I mean, I saw him in the Prize Fighter, and I just feel that 
his fitness always kind of lets him down. And I think if he if he if he gets that right, he'll he'll be you know be a force to reckon with. I think um, Tom Dallas is a fighter. If you let him get on his game, he'll try and dictate it and fight it at his pace. I think you have to take the fight to him. You kind of have to. I look at the likes of Tom Dallas. They're very much what I call from your um, conventional background of boxing. They like to box, work behind the jab, keep it nice and clean. And I think if, so for someone like Lewis, Lewis to fight him, he needs to get in there and he needs to rough him up. He needs to, you know, bring it to him and hit him from all angles and, and just take him out of his game plan. And I think he could go Lewis in his way. No, I agree on that. And, and you know what? I'm actually stealing this question from Rufus, Matt. Uh, your thoughts, you know, you've got Peter Fury, obviously the trainer of, of Tyson Fury. You've got another Fury coming up, uh, UE Fury. They're going out and around. And I'm, I'm one of the guys that say they need to really start taking their time with this kid. And don't rush him in there. But, you know, your name has been mentioned as a possible potential opponent. Uh, and I don't even want to say this, a possible you and him have possibly fight down the line. I want to get your thoughts on UE Fury. He's 8-0 right now. They, they're talking about wanting to step him up against some of the best. What are your thoughts on this kid? I mean, for me, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to... I, I've been there. I've, I've fought, like you said, at WBA. I fought for WBA World, world title. I've fought for WBU. I started late in life. I had no image of background. But the thing about me, I'm always in the gym, and I'm always... If the fight can put me back in the mix, then I'd look at it. At the moment, you know, I've been out since my last fight, and um, I've just been ticking over in the gym. We're now back in the gym, like, doing a bit of work and, and bringing this to spine partners. Yeah, you know, it's not a fight I would shy away from. I watched him fight his last thing, and he, he looks good. The, the guy who he fought came to fight. He didn't He didn't just lay down, and I think, um, um, I think Fury kind of underestimated him a little bit, and it went the distance, but the guy did come to fight. He was he was he was he was small in terms of a heavyweight, but um, you know, like you said, it, it, if you if you have the right management team around you, you should um, you know, you you put your fighter in at the right time to get him the right fights to step him up the ladder. I mean, they did they did you know they did kind of mention it earlier at one stage. Would I be interested in that fight? And I said, well, look, you know, I don't mind as soon as I'm back in there, I'd, I'd possibly look at it, but. You know, nothing more has been mentioned. And as we know, on the boxing circuit, a lot of things get said until sort of pens put to paper, nothing really happens. Now, this is go back to you, Matt. You know, listen, in your last fight, you, you fought John McDermott in a rematch, a very close point loss for you. Uh, you know, you obviously win in the first fight. You're in the gym. We know you're not, you know, you're ready to fight. You're ready to fight anyone, anytime. You've proven this your entire career. Um, basically, two-part question, would you entertain a third bout with John McDermott? And oh, what is man. next for you? Oh. What is next for you? Well, well, in all honesty, I mean, as soon as the fight finished, I was in the changing room. I've asked for a rematch. The promoter, who was Frank uh, Maloney, tried to get the rematch straight away. And he said that wasn't a fight they wanted. They, they thought, oh, look, at the end of the day, there's no, there's no, there's no secret. There's no secret in terms of boxing. I'm, they probably, when I started, I probably people, a lot of people were hanging up their gloves. I, I turned pro at 35. I've had a, I've had a, like a good career, and I'm still enjoying it. Maybe because I started late, I'm still, in, I'm still enjoying. It. I still like the fight, but um, I would love a rematch, and that's that's a fight we tried to get on. And at the time, you know, McDermott's camp said they didn't want the fight. But I think what happened with me. I took it for I took it for granted a bit to be honest with you. I, I fought the wrong fight. I didn't take the fight to him in the early stages, and um, I let it slip away from me. And I think come round six or seven, I realised I hadn't done enough to to, to win the fight. And um, I knew it was going to be close, and possibly because obviously he's a younger man, I probably can work a lot more with him. He was probably going to get the decision. And. I and I, I agree. I'd love to see that. And, you know, with that, I mean, obviously you have to go with the promoter, see what the promoter wants to do in the future. It's a fight I'd love to see. You know, you're no stranger to trilogies, you and Michael Sprott. But when do you plan and when, is your, when, are your, when are you planning on getting in the ring? Is anybody calling you up or are you having phone calls? About well, at the minute, I'm, 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 well, at the minute, I mean, I've worked with Maloney on my last um, couple of fights, Frank Maloney, and, I, you know, I spoke to him recently and I said, you know, I'm, I'm back in the gym now. Um, I'd like to have a date. I'd like to. Have, I'd like to try and be out before the end of the year. 
Um, you know, but at the same time, I'm pretty much a free agent. And if the right fight comes ab- uh, comes along, whether it be here or abroad, you know, like I said, I'm not signed or contracted to any promoter. It's kind of like fight by fight. And I'd consider, you know, most fights. We'd love to see that. That's why, Matt, one thing I'll tell you like this, you, you, you've had a late start in your career, but I know here in the United States, um, any time that I hear that you're fighting, it was like to get to, you know, to see you and John McDermott fight. It kind of snuck up on us, that fight. I was like, oh, my God, yeah, yeah. you know, next week, John McDermott and is, is Matt Skelton fighting John McDermott. I mean, you know, that day, on that day, I rushed right to a, a computer. I found the stream so I could see the fight online. And I just want to tell you like this, you know, I, I immensely enjoyed this interview with you uh, this evening. And, you know, as soon as we find out what's up next for you is in terms of your next fight, man, we'd love to get you back on the show to talk about your opponent, man. Maybe get you talking some trash uh, about your next yeah. opponent when, that, when it's signed sealed. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be you know, more than happy to come back on. And um, like I say, if, if any way I can help and, and, and talk to you guys and, it helps me also and puts me back out there, puts my name back out there, let people know that I'm just not I'm gone away and gone away for good, really. So, yeah, it'd be brilliant to talk to you again. Look, I have a feeling I have a feeling you'll be around as long as as long as it takes. And I think you're the uh, you're the you're the UK's version of Bernard Hopkins. You, Matt yeah, Skelton ain't going you, nowhere, though. folks. Matt Skelton's coming oh, for that... Bernard Hopkins' record in uh, in the next couple <laughs> of years. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. All right, All right. thank you guys. Cheers, my Take friend. Care. Have a great night. Yeah. Thanks, Bye-bye.